Welcome back, I'm Dr. Dye, and in this video, we're going to wrap up chapter three by looking at active transport. All right, what's active transport? So this is a type of transport that requires the use of the cell's energy. So passive transport relied on the energy within a concentration gradient, but in active transport, we're gonna be relying on molecules like ATP to drive uh, transport of molecules across the membrane. Um, this is because we're gonna be talking about moving uh, substances against their concentration gradient, right? We're gonna be moving things from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. Uh, and that takes energy to do because you are pushing against the natural flow. Um, this also is used to move charged particles, very charged particles. Um, and really large molecules. Some of them require energy to move across the membrane. Okay, so let's first talk about electrochemical gradients. So this is when there's a difference in the net charge on the inside versus the outside of the plasma membrane. These are incredibly important to your nervous system cells in particular, um, but also to your muscle cells. So the inside of living cells is electrically a little negative with respect to the outside of the cell. And this electrochemical gradient, it's, it's so important for how we send signals. Um, it allows, uh, as it changes across the gradient, you can send signals. Really, really great stuff. So moving against this gradient. To move substances against their concentration gradient or against their electrochemical gradient, uh, the cell's gotta use some energy to do it. The energy is gonna be harvested typically from ATP uh, which is generated by mostly the mitochondria, right, through oxidative phosphorylation. So active transport mechanisms collectively um, called pumps or carrier proteins, uh, they're gonna work against the electrochemical gradient or against the concentration gradient. Two mechanisms for this. Uh, we have primary active transport, which moves ions across the membrane to create a difference in charge across that membrane. A good example for this is uh, sodium potassium pumps. So what it does is it's going to pump sodium out of the cell, out of the inside of the cell to create this slightly more positive charge on the outside of the cell membrane and slightly more negative on the inside. Then the secondary transport uses the energy of that electrochemical gradient created by pumping, right, pumping that sodium out. Um, to bring other substances into the cell, things like amino acids or glucose. Glucose, glucose is big um, and can't just go through the membrane. Um, another type of active transport, and this is big active transport, is endos, uh, endocytosis. So this is a type of cell transport that's gonna move particles, uh, like large molecules, parts of a cell, or even whole cells into the organism. I mean, whole cells like bacteria usually. Um, the plasma membrane folds in and vaginates, forming a little pocket. And you can see in our little picture here, um, forms these little, little pockets uh, that can then come back together and it pinches off and pulls whatever that was inside the cell. And it creates a new vacuole. And that vacuole might go fuse with a lysosome or any number of other targets inside the cell for further, further use. Uh, there's going to be three variations of endocytosis that we're going to talk about. Um, we have phagocytosis, which is um, the process by which a large particle, um, like, like a whole cell, is taken into the cell, right? Phagocytosis, um, cell eating, okay, cell eating. So this is how um, well, a lot of your white blood cells, how they like, engulf like, little bacteria that they come across that don't belong. Uh, we have pinocytosis. Uh, which is the cell membrane surrounds a small volume of fluid, pinches it off, forming a vesicle, and pulls it, you know, pulls it inside the cell. Um, that can be a way to bring uh, more water into the cell rapidly. And then, uh, so pinocytosis, uh, cell drinking is another way to, to say that. Uh, and then receptor-mediated endocytosis, which is the uptake of substances by cells in a really targeted fashion. Um, so, uh, a molecule will bind to the receptor and it triggers this whole process that will then lead to um, engulfing and pulling in um, all the things that are attached to that receptor site. 
All right, so that was bringing things in. We can also put things out. Um, exocytosis is the opposite process, right? So we're gonna expel particles from the cell. Uh, in this case, it's usually vesicles um, that were created by the endomembrane system, right? So from the ER to the Golgi and the Golgi um, sends these little vesicles off and they head for the plasma membrane. They fuse with the plasma membrane, you can see, um, right? So they fuse with the plasma membrane and then release uh, whatever the molecules are out into the extracellular fluid. And that can be signaling molecules, um, I mean, any number of things, just depends on what the cell is producing. All right. So we made it. <laughs> we made it through chapter three. This is a really long chapter. Um, good job for sticking with it. And this is a lot of information. Uh, don't be surprised if you need to go back and review some of it. Uh, for this particular section, uh, make sure that you, you know, know the difference between, all right, these are the ways that transport happens passively versus actively. Uh, make sure you've got it clear which ones require energy input and how they each work. So now that we've got all the structures of the cell and their functions, have a basic feel for it. Now we can start dig digging deeper into how cellular metabolism is gonna work. And that's what we'll be doing in the next chapter. I will see you then.